All right, guys. Have you ever been to the New York Aquarium? How many of you have been to the New York Aquarium as children? Or recently? No, Christian, you have not been to New York Aquarium? Come on, come on, who else? What about butterfly? Very boring, you say, Mustafa. Well, maybe you have been there only recently. That's why you find it boring. No, so? Who else? Hmm? Yes. Uh, by the way, have you noticed that there are no more dolphins or um, pretty much there, there are fewer and fewer animals there, right? Do you, have you ever asked yourself why? Yes, I used to work in the New York Aquarium. And uh, yes, I like uh, certain fishes, you know, dolphins in particular. So uh, here is uh, what we are going to understand now, right? So we already know how to take derivatives of x times sine x or quotient rule, we have known that. Now let's take account of what animals live in our sea of mathematics. What are we familiar with? Well, we are familiar with polynomial fishes, right? So this fish is a polynomial. We have radical fish, correct? We have involution fish. So involution sounds to me like ouj, and ouj is a particular type of um, snake. So it looks like an eel to me. Okay, so, so we have involution functions like one over x. Altogether, if you take, for example, uh, involution and polynomial and radical fish, altogether they form uh, the class of algebraic functions. Pretty much those three fishes you were familiar with, hopefully, at the very beginning of the semester. And then, of course, you have the medusas. The medusas are the trick functions. You can see why I think of them as the trick functions, yes? So that's the medusa. And of course, the octopi are the exponential functions. So those are all the functions we are familiar with. Yes? Good. Now let's see how familiar you are with the situation. So you go to the aquarium and this is what you see. You are asked to differentiate sine of x squared plus one. Before you differentiate anything, guys, tell me what is it that you see? Look at it. What are you staring at? What is this thing? What happened? A function and a function. Yes, but in particular, uh, what happened? I mean, I just, I just gave you all that speech about the aquarium, right? So, I'm, I'm checking it, well, guys. What, what goes in that uh, box of yours? Wonderful, here you go. Here is a person that understands. You know how I hated children when I was working there? They go, eh, does it bite? Oh my God, I could have predicted the entire conversation. I just, uh, I could have predicted this person to his grave. They were that boring, right? Oh my God, it's a shark, does it bite? I, you know, I, I, and there were of course children that were interesting. You could have uh, great conversations with them. I always worked with the, with the most ugly creatures so that I will not be bothered. I think so. Like, it's very cold water, and then I could just sit and do nothing. And and by the time the gel, the, the sea star will walk to the other end of the aquarium, I knew it's my time to clock out. Fun fact: starfish have eyes under under five arms. Well, you see, here you go. You know that they have uh, eyes on their uh, on their arms, but they have no brain, like many many people. Exactly the same, right? But at least they have interesting uh, structure, right? <laughs> so yes, so mostly I would say, well, do you want to touch it? Ooh, no, so get the hell out of here. Don't bother me about it, right? So you want, you know, do you know how you say horseshoe crab in German? No, of course not. <laughs> That's a silly question. So um, exactly, Rachel, one fish ate another fish. In particular, the medusa fish 
has eaten the polynomials, yes? So how do we deal with the situation? So first I will, you know, against my, my taste, I will first explain the procedure and then I will explain why it works. Sounds good? So here is, uh, here we go, okay? So this is what happened. The Medusa ate a polynomial. So then the way I'm going to uh, dissect, so the way I'm going to dissect it, I'm going to fillet the outer fish and then, oh my God, I find another one and I, I'm, I'm filleting the inner fish. You understand? Fillet outer fish, then fillet the inner fish. Filleting in this case means differentiation. If you are vegetarian, for the vegetarians out there, you can imagine peeling an onion. Good. So the derivative of sine is cosine. You see this? This is what I think. Derivative of sine of a box is cosine of a box multiplied by what you find in the belly of the big fish, which is the derivative of x squared plus one, and that's 2x. So the answer is cosine x squared plus one times 2x. Are you with me? It's like belly of the beast. Exactly. So what I imagine is this. I imagine you take this uh, medusa, you cut it open, you see inside of it there is another fish. Wonderful. So now you have a bigger meal. So you fillet that one as well. Are you with me? That's chain rule for you. So let's do another one, guys. What happened here? So it's sine squared x plus one. What happened in this situation? Please write in the comments and then solve it. Sine squared of x plus one. What happened here? No one ate anything, why not, uh, Rachel, right? So jellyfish and a fish are swimming together, so it's just cosine squared x. No, look at it, look what happened here. You just, it's a recognition. Something has eaten something else. So? No, 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 no. Come on, Rachel. There is a square here, no? So it's the, it's the opposite. It's, it's, now, uh, it's now the polynomial fish it has eaten sign. It's the fish that ate a medusa. Yes? Here you go. So then how do we differentiate it? Find the derivative of this expression. Can you do it? It's always uh, the derivative of the outer function, and then you plug in the inner function. No, Christian, because you, 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 in your filleting, you forgot to fillet the outer fish. So what you do is this. Look, at, look what happened before. I, I take the derivative of the outer fish. Look at it. Just, just look at the sign. Take the derivative of sign. It's cosine. Then I find it's inner fish times the derivative of the inner fish. Outer function derivative composed with inner function times the derivative of outer function. Yes. Yes, yes, so both is.
Okay, James. James, you took the derivative of the inner function without cutting the outer function. It's like you, you have a transparent fish, you carved the, the inner one. No, no, no. Careful, careful. Look what happens, guys. What is the outer function? Oh, no, 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 no. This one, look at it. What is the outer function? So let's, let's do it together, I guess then, right? So here is the outer function, here is the inner function. So here is what, what, what I see. It's box squared plus one, its derivative is two times box. And then I place whatever is in the box times the derivative of what's in the box. What's in the box is uh, sine. So I take the derivative, it's cosine. Are you with me? That's what happens here. Derivative of outside, put the inner function and then uh, multiply by the derivative of inner function. Yes. Here is another, uh, here are a few more questions. So let's try the derivative of e to the x squared. What has happened here, guys? So which creature has eaten which other creature? So chain rule is basically when, when one animal, it's, a, it's like the circle of life. One animal ate another animal. Beautiful, Christian, you did it. And thank you for octopus eta polynomial. You got me. You got it, Alan, wonderful, very good. Okay, so uh, let's say so, uh, so first of all, A guys. And um, misfortune with green eyes. Do you remember how to do it?
Come on, guys. Uh, A, B, C, okay. Solve as many as you can, as fast as you can. Okay, good, Rachel. <clears throat> All right, so let's do load number A. I actually have uh, all of them right below. Look at it, guys. You see? You take the derivative of the outer function you place the box, right? So it's it's e raised to the box. The derivative of e raised to the box is e to the box times the derivative of x squared. Good? So the answer is e to the x squared times 2x. Now let's see the next one, b. You can see that um, tangent has eaten a radical. So what's the derivative of tangent? It's secant squared. That derivative of tangent is secant squared times the derivative of root of x, it's one over two root x. The derivative of root of x is one over two root x, correct? So you just write the product. Good. Good. Okay, Christian, what about? What should I wait about? How is root of x uh, derivative is, uh, well, it's very simple, look at it. We can do it by definition. Here is by definition. Uh, so we have a limit as z goes to x, root z minus root x divided um, by z minus x. So that would be, limit as z goes to x root z minus root x over root z squared minus root x squared which is simply limit as z goes to x of 1 over root z plus root x which is 1 over 2 root x that's by that's going by definition or i can see that for example that x to the one half is my function, take the derivative that would be uh, one half x to the minus one half, which is one over two root x. Yeah, good. Wonderful. Great. So what about uh, number C, guys? Now, now it's your turn. You do C and do it quickly. I want to see that you are actually understanding. C. Well, good for you. You have good hearing. You're still young. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, he ran away. I mean, if he comes back, I will show you. Miau, 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 wirf weg, sonst brennst du lichterloh. So come on guys, think about it and I will, uh, I will be right back. Uh, where is Elisa Scott? Where is it? Oh, great. He's very cute. If, if I had many black cats, I could teach you about permutation, right? So just switch a, a cats and then ask for the probability that uh, you will select your own cat. That's a great problem, right guys? Each of you brings a cat, a black cat, and then we put them all in a pile and each of, the, <clears throat> each of you will randomly pick a cat. And then the question is, what's the likelihood that you will pick your own? You know what's the likelihood? It's e to the power of minus one. <clears throat> Yeah, show me your dog. I'll be interested, Christian. Are you ready? Come on, guys. Uh, uh, derivative, uh, the C and D, come on, let's kill it. Here, if you want to see the cat, I don't remember who asked for it. And this is one of them. I'll throw him out, right? Oh, show me where is your, oh, wow. It's a guy or a girl, Ikra. <laughs> it's a very beautiful cat, I see. <clears throat> All right, did we solve this problem? Let's uh, quickly do it. Come on, guys. So today, maybe we are all out of efficiency. So what is this? This is simply derivative of secant is what? It's secant of whatever is inside tangent of whatever is inside. What's inside? Inside is one over x. Yes? Times the derivative of what's inside. What's the derivative of one over x? It's minus one over x squared. We are done. Yes? So the answer is uh, secant one over x, tangent one over x times minus one over x. And don't you dare multiply the x's here. 
it's not um, you you cannot multiply it through good finally what's the derivative of e to the cosecant x here it is it's e to the cosecant times the derivative of cosecant which is minus cosecant cotangent you see so don't make the mistake of multiplying x squared into any of those x's because you don't have access to them right that's that's a very very freshman type of uh, mistake now why does chain rule work that's the interesting question so suppose we know how to differentiate the function g and we know how to differentiate the function f what would be the derivative of the composition yes now let's see if we are better at the peekaboo game now okay so um, i try to take the derivative of g f x it's just a function you understand that for some reason people freeze when they see letters they it's it so it's just a function what is the definition of the derivative it is the limit as z goes to x of g f z minus g f x divided by z minus x that's the definition of derivative yes you agree with me now here is the million dollar question well i don't i cannot say it's a million dollar question i don't have the money to pay you if you answer it right but what is uh, what should I actually want to see on the bottom? So uh, what should you recognize? What would I really be happy to see on the bottom? You see, I, I, I am actually splitting it up. Uh, this is Z minus X. What you have really been happy to see here, please. <clears throat> you got it girl what about the rest of you do you see what you want to see there what do you want there if you know what you want you will get it that's what it, what's true about life Come on, only one person. Let's play autocorrect. If you are if you're stuck there, let's play autocorrect. Well, here let's let's look at it carefully. Autocorrect, guys. Are you ready? So, I'm going to write it in entirely different symbols. So, uh, what I have here is a sine of something minus sine of else. 
What do you want to see on the bottom and why? And let's just uh, say that uh, the something is going to the else. What do you want to see on the bottom? Yes, James, you got it. Exactly, brilliant. And what about the rest of you? What do you want to get on the bottom? Yes, Fu. Yes, Rachel. Who else? Yes, Alan. Come on, faster. We, we only have 10 minutes. Say I have what? I have one, two, three, four, five, maybe six. Come on guys, there are 26 students. What about the rest of you? Yes, Alisa, good. What about the rest of you? Because then what do you get? So the answer is you, you should, you want autocorrect this guys. This is what you want to place here. You want to autocorrect and write Something minus else. Now, why is that? If if I if you write something minus else, what's the answer? You can give me the answer in terms of the information given. What's the answer? Almost, Alisa, what is the answer? We said something goes to else and we divide by something minus else. Why did we divide by something minus else? Because what the entire ratio becomes? The entire ratio is what? Peekaboo. Well, James, careful. You see, we divided by something minus else. What's the entire thing equal to? Uh, but how would they cross out? Sign, uh, sign by itself is meaningless. It's, it's a function. It's a name of it. No. What's going on, guys? Well, you said divide by something minus cells, but then something that I do not understand goes on. Uh, no, Alisa, it's not one. What is this ratio? What is What are we talking about in this ratio? Come on. It's not coincidental here, by the way, Christian. Right? I think I, when I think of it, I, I want to course in Arabic. God damn it, right? Well, don't you see what it is? No, Nassim, it's not zero. What is this defining? Come on, come on. Yes, derivative of what? Of what? Of what function and at what? Point, yes, Christian, derivative of sine at what value? Exactly, exactly, finally, finally, oh, God damn it. And I will not tell you what's the curse because it's very rude, but uh, you might guess what it is. The else has little to do with it. So it's cosine of else. Why? Because that's the derivative of sine of x where x equals to else. Yes? 
You understand what I'm trying to show you guys? Again, uh, it's it, it, you, you're, you're, not, you're paying attention to the letters. That's not important. Something is going to else. If you divide by something minus else, you get the derivative of this function. Yes? Now let's go back to this question. Now, what do I want to divide here by? Back to the chain rule, guys. What do I want to see on the bottom? Rachel already knows it, but let's write it again. What do I want to see on the bottom and why? Yes, Alisa, very good. Because now the something, yes, Christian, very good. Come on. Yes. Exactly. Well, okay, almost. So we, we want to see that, yes? Uh, I don't want to say what is that. I, I want you to all write it. I want to see that you're understanding. I see three people follow, the others are uh, tuning out or something, right? You, are, you Come on guys, you can do it. What's, what, is that, what is this? It's exactly the same pickable problem. What do I want to see on the bottom? Clearly I want to see f of z minus f of x. What is the something? This is the something. What is the something? Uh, what is the else? It's this, you see? So what do you see when I write um, when I write f of z minus f of x here? I simply see the derivative of the outer function evaluated at fx. You there? You see that it's just the derivative at um, at this part at this point at the else. You see, it's the derivative of this function at else. Now, if I divide it by f of z minus f of x, I have to uh, balance and multiply by the same thing. Yes? And then what is this expression? This is f prime of x. Yes? It's just f prime of x. So that's where you have the chain rule, derivative of outer function, inner function inside times the derivative of the outer function. You could have come up with this formula on your own very quickly if you realize this principle. Are you with me? Do you understand the idea? Now let's see, uh, what about that? Here is it's an example of a question I might, uh, might have asked on your exam, right? It's, it's what I call uh, cheating prevention, right? At least it prevents the computer from helping you perhaps. So suppose that uh, we know that um, f of three equal to, uh, to seven, and f prime of three is equal to 10, okay? So tell me please, uh, what would you say is this uh, limit, guys? Limit as x goes to zero of f three plus sine x, minus seven divided by divided by x. What is that limit equal to?
Okay, great. Okay, one person said something. Let's see what the other will say. James, maybe you have the right answer. I'm not sure. Uh, just look at it carefully. Is there an X in your answer or you, or you mean times X or something? I'm not sure. Times X? But uh, uh, what, what is the, what the X is, it doesn't exist. You have to understand. So we're saying there oh, is a number that's going to zero. When you say X, uh, you are talking about all numbers of sorts. You see, just think about what this is saying. This is saying that I don't read X. You see, I say a number is approaching zero. This number is plugged into sine, then three is added to it, then it's plugged into some function, then seven is subtracted to it, and then we divide by the number. Notice I never used the once the word X. It's just um, yes, yes, okay, good. Good guys, a few of you, good, good. So you're there, James, almost there, right? Just be... Be careful. Remember, always read it and think, does, does your solution make sense? Okay. How many answered? Okay, good, good. People are answering, I see, okay. The answer is, guys, what is this? Uh, when X is close to zero, sign is not doing much to that X, do you agree? You see how we reason, right? We can reason this way. I can reason if you prefer uh, without this intuition, I can do it uh, two ways. You just tell me if you want to see it in many ways. Just let me know if you would prefer to see it in other ways. Both ways, okay, right? So first I, I do this, um, um, I, I, I do this, I, I feel that when, when X is small, X is close to zero, sign will not change it, you agree? So it pretty much is not doing anything. So I'm saying this is the same as limit where X goes to zero of f of three plus x minus seven divided by x. And that's just the definition of the derivative. Is the definition of the derivative at three. And that is 10 according to my calculation, yes? Here is uh, possibly if you're not convinced that I can just drop the x, I do it uh, this way. So uh, limit as uh, x goes to zero of f of three plus sine x minus seven is the f of, is, is uh, I'll just keep it, it's just the f of three divided by, what do I want it divided by? It used to be divided by x, but what do I want it divided by? Remember the something minus something else. What is f of seven? f of seven, seven is not important here. What matters is that seven is uh, the value of the function at three. So very simply, this is something and this is else. So I want divi it divided by something minus else or in particular, I want to see a sign here. Yes? I want to see a sign here. So then multiply by sine x, and that's the x that I actually had. Yeah? So now I can quickly read what, what, what this is the definition of the derivative of uh, f at three. And this is the, uh, simply the definition of the derivative of sine at one or simply the answer is one. So it's f of three times one. Yes, good. So uh, I see some people already departing. I guess you're tired. Uh, you, can, uh, you can go if, you, if you're tired, but if you want to, I can give you a few more examples of uh, what you, will, you might see, how you might see questions on the exam. All right, so I, I will I will give it partially like abstract because uh, that prevents uh, on the first exam that prevents uh, prevents you from just immediately checking the solution using uh, um, using a software. Computers are still not um, in general the average the, the, the software is available there. So I will ask questions like this on the exam that when you will see it, okay? Why? Because uh, uh, this way you cannot just put it in the computer and, or in Mathematica to ask uh, the calculation to be carried for you.
uh, a review session is after class. You, it's, every session is a review session. So we can, we can talk about so many interesting things. Yes, if you have questions, it's after class. The, the exam is not real life exam, but beware there will be a final and it will be real life final. So even if you are escaping my detector, I do not catch you cheating and I don't bother with you. You know that you might fail the final and the final is not in my control. So Corona exams were exams I did last semester, but you have, you have solved exams from previous semesters. Our exam is going to be slightly different uh, than those. Those were, many of them were in-class exams. Okay, you want another question? Here is another question. Are you with me? So we'll do a few questions and then we, today I might uh, have to go earlier. I have to do some work before tomorrow. But let's do uh, this question, guys. So suppose that uh, we know that uh, that k is continuous and that um, limit as x goes to minus one of kx is five, okay? So I want you to tell me what is the limit as x goes to minus one of uh, of f of k x you will see the exam you don't have to worry about it right you and then you will see the topics you can see previous exams if you cannot wait before it so uh, f of k x minus f of five divided by kx minus uh, five. What is this? Uh, and let's say, uh, so you can, in symbols, right? What is this in symbols? I didn't give you enough information to make it into a number. What is it in symbols? Or you know what, let me change the question slightly. Are you ready? Uh, wait for a second, I'll, I'll make it slightly more interesting. So let's say uh, that this thing is, hmm. let's say this thing is um, 15. And this thing is uh, three kx. So tell me what is uh, this expression in symbols. Uh, well, look at it. There is the K, uh, K as X goes to minus one approaches five. And then there is this F uh, about which I have little mentioned. So the, the answer is in terms of uh, symbols, in terms of maybe K is used, maybe not. There is F that you have to account for.
No, you, you, no worry, you haven't missed anything. I haven't given you uh, the exam. Okay, uh, so I haven't given anyone any exams yet. They are take home exams, you practice them, you have plenty of time, nothing to worry about. Final is not, um, you know, final you have to do it on time. So that's your, your biggest uh, scare is the final. How are you doing guys? It's, it's not uh, what you imagine. It's very, it's simpler, right? So you have to, you have to look at this expression. Identify it um, formally.
the, you, you, um, four, you forgot the three on the denominator, but yes. But yes, you got the idea. Don't be sad, guys. Uh, you're, you're getting there. But it's a strange thing, you see. It's just uh, you look at symbols, and, and, and for some reason, your symbols are not natural to you. It's just uh, what do you want to see on the denominator? Right, three times kx, if kx goes to five, three times kx will go to 15. So it's the same thing. It's really, this is the something that goes to the something else, right? So this is uh, uh, something and this is the else. So what you want to see is uh, on the denominator, the something minus, uh, minus the else. So you, so you want to see this. You can do it faster if you want afterwards, right? And then um, what you truly see is, um, well, so that's the numerator and then times uh, the denominator, the true denominator, which is kx minus five. And on the top I have um, the new, new, new to balance it out, I have three kx minus 15, yeah? So what do we get? We see that uh, this this expression is uh, well. It's equal. I don't need to say even. It's it's equal to um, to three. Do you agree? It's just three. And uh, what is this expression equal to? Symbolically, this is equal to the derivative uh, of f at the number fifteen. I didn't, uh, you cannot do more because I haven't said uh, what the derivative equal to. So the answer is, um, is three times the derivative of uh, 15. There is no K, but there is an F. Does it make sense? Uh, if you would like to share your thoughts, I'm, I'm all ears. So what, what, what goes on in your mind? Are you worried about something? Uh, are you upset or what, what's happening? Alisa, for example, what uh, what uh, are your eyes betraying? <clears throat> do you understand, guys? First of all, do you do you understand when I explain uh, uh, do, when I explain this? Well, because uh, because it's uh, uh, f of something mi minus f of else divided by something minus else. It's the, it's the definition of the derivative of f at else. Do you see, you, uh, first of all guys, do you all see that we're solving, uh, most of our time we're solving the same problem. Do you all see that? The same problem. And that problem is, do you recognize it's the derivative? If you do, um, pretty much that's what calculus is. Recognize the same problem again, again, and again. If you can do that, then uh, uh, this entire fat book is essentially just a few problems, that's it. How are you, Karolina? Karolinushka, how are you doing? Why are you nervous? Relax, everything's good. You're, you're doing good uh, work. And uh, again, do, relax about my exams. You see, maybe you should be worried about the final, maybe, right? But my exams are, uh, you will pass them. So here is how you're taking the exam, okay? It's, it's, it, that's why I, did, I, I can tell you, you're staying after class. The, the exam is a take-home exam. And how much do, time do you need for it? Let's say I'm giving you a week. Oh, you're not finishing a week? You have two weeks. Yes, relax now. You don't understand something? You can ask me questions, we can figure it out. So that would be those exams. All, all I'm asking is um, just uh, think about those problems, that's it actually solve those problems. And uh, be worried, of course, the final is not like that, right? It's worth a lot of points, the final is timed. So what happens if I announce it to, uh, to uh, I mean, last semester I even said, you don't have to come if you don't want to, so what they do, they don't come. And, uh, and I'm pretty sure that, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure also that they, they are not studying on their own. So that's the thing. 
Okay, so uh, so okay, let's see what can we do here. It's okay, uh, uh, Carolina. I, I, I don't feel don't feel that you see. You have to understand that. I should, if, if you spoke Russian, I would show you a, a, a funny sketch. They have this kind of dude, right? Uh, there's a first grade and there's the dude, he's, he's like very big and he's like, he's answering all the questions correctly. Like what is two plus two? It's four. And uh, what is uh, three times six? It's 18. And like, oh, how do you know that, uh, right? Uh, and then somebody comes after him, he's supposed to be in the seventh grade. And he says, no, I'm not going here, I am the best. So that's the same about me. You see, I've been doing calculus before you were born, most likely. Right, I have plenty of experience, so don't feel like that. But one thing is, uh, I, I can tell you. Okay, what you want another question or what? What what's going on, guys? What do you want to do? I was doing one of the um, practice tests, and I came across a question that I didn't really agree with your answer. Okay, maybe I was wrong. Who say it's good not to agree with me? Uh, Let's see which, which exam. Practice, it's exam 1.2. Math 150, practice exam 1.2. It's in exam review exam. Yes, uh, practice exam, yes. Yeah? So it's mm -hmm. one point, uh, one point, not this one, there it's, oh, sorry, one point. Yeah, I believe it's the second one. The second one, yeah. Okay, which one? That was number three. Okay, number three. Okay, so your answer was the negative infinity and I think it's positive infinity. Okay, let's see. Uh, so I'm saying X going to minus infinity, yes? Yeah. Okay, so let's see what's, uh, what's happening here. So first you, you do this analysis, right? Uh, you look. Uh, this part is going to minus infinity, yes? Now let's look at this part. It's going to minus infinity, you agree? And then what about this part? It's also going to, um, it's going to, uh, together with the not minus, to, min to minus infinity, yes? It's going to minus infinity. So altogether, I have minus infinity multiplied by minus infinity, and the answer is plus infinity. Okay, so the so answer, right. I, got, I got positive infinity and on the answers. Then I made a mistake. Okay, fine. Good. I make plenty of mistakes. So you can notice uh, in the notes. Actually, what about, let's say, let's see what happens now. Okay, let's change this question. What do you say? Uh, the same question, but now X going to infinity. What would you say? Well, it, uh, you, see, you understand what I'm doing? I'm yeah. changing the question, guys. Are you ready? I gave you here in this in this question. It's actually uh, I said minus infinity. That's a that's a boring question. What about this one? Limit as x goes to plus infinity of four x three x minus root nine x squared plus one. What is that equal to? You can solve it, of course, in many ways, but uh, well, let's see. Uh, let's see which way you would pick.
Professor? Yeah? I know I'm a little bit behind, but I, I was trying to solve the original problem instead of the one that you gave us. Oh, with, with the limit as x goes to minus infinity, yes? Yeah, correct. Um, I'm getting negative infinity, you not are. positive. Let's, let, let's look at it again. You see, here is how, how I do it. You see, I look at the 4x, right? The 4x will go to minus infinity, yes? The 3x will go to minus infinity, yes? That's in parentheses. And then uh, look at this expression here. Yeah, so I did, I did negative infinity minus negative infinity. Oh, well, you have to be careful. That, that's, that's maybe something that happened to me. You see, it's minus infinity. But when you square the minus infinity, it, it becomes positive infinity plus one positive infinity. Square root is positive infinity. So that's plus infinity. And there is the negative here, right? So it's really um, minus infinity times minus infinity minus infinity. So it's really minus infinity times minus infinity. All right, thank you. Make sense? Yep. I hope you won't forget to show me your dog. I'm interested. Uh, give me a minute. I'm still solving problems. Not to solve, so no worries. Yes, so. Um, is it, is the answer, is the answer count, like, is it, I don't think, I don't think it's plus infinity or negative infinity. Because I didn't say it is, I didn't say it is. I'm just saying, um, uh, let's see if you, if you figure it out. Because for this question. I, I think it's just zero at this point because, mm -hmm. because all the, all the affinities just cancel out. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But isn't it isn't it four times a massive number times three times a massive number and then minus the square root of a massive number? Uh, so, so isn't it still going towards infinity? infinity? Let's see, let's see. So um uh, so we have four X, so it's a massive number. Here we but here we have a massive number uh, minus a massive number, right? So here it's it's, a, it's infinity fighting against uh, zero, yes. And maybe uh, well, let's let's see what wins. Are you ready, guys? There are many ways to solve this. Uh, I, I can show you the old way. I, I also like you to think of the new way. Can you guess what uh, what that might be when you say um, when you say infinity times um, when you see say things like that? You might already imagine it has to do with, um, with, uh, with derivatives. I got zero for that answer, by the way. Okay. All right. Well, 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 let's, let's see what we have here. Okay, guys. So uh, what we do is uh, here I will factor out x squared. So I have 4x and in parentheses uh, 3x minus, uh, basically, when I factor x squared, this is just x times root of 9 plus 1 over x squared. You agree? That's what I have here. And uh, then I can factor out the x from, from both parts. Actually, I factor minus x, so I have minus 4x squared. And here I have root of 9 plus 1 over x squared yes um minus three does it begin to look like something mm. you see what i'm doing and so what i i see one over x squared and here i see x squared so what do i do i now divide by one over x squared so what i have is minus four and here i have um one over x squared. And in the numerator, I see root of nine plus one over x squared minus three. Does it remind you of something? Derivative. Exactly. That's the derivative times minus four. 
you can solve it like previ pre using previous techniques, but it's again peekaboo. So, um, you know, what is this? This is minus four, uh, uh, minus four divided by, it's, it's, it's the root of nine, so it's three, so it's minus four divided by two root uh, three. And the answer is uh, minus two divided by root three. You want to you do it again? Or more questions like this? What happens to this? Can you do another one, I guess? Yeah. You understand what happened? Uh, very often, uh, it's just recognition. I could have, I can do it algebraically. See, I, you want me to do it algebraically? I can do it algebraically as well. But that, that's, that's a boring way to do it. Alisa, well, nice to talk to you. Thank you for staying. Have a good one. Can we do You're it the boring way? The boring way, yes, but uh, but if I made the power here bigger, the boring way will be really gruesome. Okay, clear all. Okay, the boring way, yes. So you like multiplying by conjugations, yes. So uh, so what what I, I'm gonna again I'm solving limit, where x goes to infinity, of four x times three uh, x minus root nine x squared plus one. Now you see a root here, you multiply by the conjugate. So what you have is a limit as X goes to infinity or X multiply by the conjugate. You would see nine X squared minus nine X squared plus one divided by, uh, by three X plus root nine X squared plus one. Yes. So here I am left with a limit as x goes to infinity of, of it's just simply minus 4x. You see it's minus 4x on the numerator. On the denominator, it's 3x plus root 9. I said root 3, I should have been 3 because root of 9 is 3. I, I made a mistake in that uh, calculation slide here, right? It, it should have been, uh, uh, it should be minus 4 divided by uh, 2 times 3. In other words, it's minus 2 divided by 3, not by root 3. So we have nine x squared plus one. Yes. Now I look at the at the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient of the denominator is three uh, x and another three x. So it's six uh, x altogether. So that's the same thing as minus four x divided by six x in the limit, which means it's minus four over six or minus two over three. You follow? That's just by conjugation uh, without understanding what it is. Rachel, you look uh, somewhat sad for some reason. I'm not sure why. What did you do um, to make it 6x? Uh, because when the x is, remember the think of the box method, uh, think inside the box method. So only the leading power is, uh, is actually doing anything. So root of nine uh, X squared is really three X. So I look here, I see what's the leading term of the denominator. It's three X and another three X. Mm -hmm. If you want, I can do it longer, but you, you understand what I do guys? Remember with, with, with limits at infinity, only the biggest terms are the ones that actually end up, end up doing something. There, I, I can do it slower if you want right, to see what happens. Anybody needs it slower or what? Uh, wait, I got one quick question. Yeah. So um, on on the um, the on a numerator, right? We see nine x to the second minus um, minus, and then in parentheses nine nine x plus one, right? Yeah. Don't you? I know you times the four x on top. Isn't it supposed to be like 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 four x minus one? Or am I going crazy? Because because, um, because when you distribute the minus, it's nine x squared minus nine x squared minus one. So uh, the nine x squared cross out, and notice the minus it goes, it goes. Look at it, it goes. Oh, here. you're right, you're right. Okay. Right. So I, uh, so it's so it's just minus one on the numerator and multiplied by four x is minus four x. Okay. Right? But you want another question like this? You understand? Yeah, that, All those questions are, if you know derivatives, you can solve most of them uh, by recognition. 
You can do bar algebra, of course, some of them. No, no trouble for it. Nice that you you stay so long. I also had another question. Oh, good. Um, do the other question, okay? Can we do? It's a very specific question. Can we do the limit? Uh, okay, so you want to dictate, sure. Yeah. Uh, limit. The limit as x approaches pi over four. of one minus tan x. One minus, oh, that's great. Over sine x minus cosine x. So uh, uh, here is uh, your corrective reasoning. Let's, let's see guys, you want to do it? You see, the, the only reason I'm able to go somewhere is because I recognize uh, what's about. I, I, I can see the idea of what somebody was doing and I know how to get there a different way. That's the, the best way to do, to do something, right? If you know where your friend is going and you know the terrain very well, you can get there better than your friend. You can select a better road. So what's happening here? Not enough of you watched uh, the um, lecture, what in hell are we doing? Right, remember that we, we have plenty of exercises like this. You realize guys, so we're, what we're doing is we, every time we, we see what is the derivative within this expression, right? And if we can do that, then we can just uh, bypass the algebra. How would you like me to begin? Would you like me to try to solve it algebraically first or um, using uh, recognition? Can you try recognition? Yes. <laughs> Some of you probably have blood type A plus. My blood type is zero minus, you know, I never liked school. So here is uh, what, happened. look at it, X going to pi over four and I see tangent. If I see uh, x going to pi over four and I see tangent, I want it to be opposed to what number? Yeah, probably I have zero plus as well, Christian, right? Usually you get a plus as pity points. But so, <clears throat> next to the tangent, I like to see the one, right? If it's pi over four, tangent of pi over four is one. Do you see that? That's numerator, good. Now here is a question. If I see a sign and I see pi over four, what do I want to see? Sign minus what value uh, if I would like to see? If I see sign and I see pi over four, I want to see what value next to sign. You see next to tangent, I like to see one if it's pi over four. Next to sign, I want to see what?
Oh. Wow. It's a, it, what is it? It's, it? it's a poodle of sorts. Very nice looking dog. Very pretty. It's a mixed breed of a Yorkie. Yorkie. Oh, oh. Very, very smart. Um, so, somewhat <laughs> smart. Not much. She knows but, Arabic, though. Let's see if he's good at um, at calculus. What's she knows. She knows. She knows Arabic, so that's ah, that's pretty cool. She knows Arabic, huh? Yeah. <laughs> pretty dog. Thank you. They tolerate you for a long time. I mean, I, I, I see how you're holding this dog. I'm wondering, with a cat, he scratched me in the eye, you know? Almost missed the, the, the other day. So anyhow, so uh, what, guys, can you see the sine and cosine? What, what should you see next to sine? There is a pi over four, there is a sine. What should you see next to it? You're probably extremely tired because I'm not sure why you don't see it. Tangent of pi over four is one, yes? If I see a sign I want, and I see a minus, I want sine minus what value? Sine of x minus sine of pi over four, of course. Or minus one over uh, root two, yeah? So here is uh, how I look at it, look at it guys. So correction. I see limit as x goes to pi over four. I write here one minus uh, tangent x. What I want to see here is, is uh, x minus pi over four, because now this looks like, almost looks like the derivative of tangent, except in reverse, right? I just need to factor a minus one. Multiplied by x minus uh, pi over four over sine x minus uh, cosine x. Good. Now, what is this? This is the same as minus the derivative of tangent x at x equal to pi over four. And the answer is minus uh, uh, secant squared pi over four, which is simply minus two. So this part is minus two. Now I, I will have to investigate what is uh, this part. Yes. So I actually investigate it as follows. I'm actually, I actually prefer this. So what about limit as X goes to pi over four of sine X minus uh, cosine X over X minus pi over four. What is that? This is a limit as X goes to pi over four. I see sine X. And what do I want to see next to sine? I of course want to see minus uh, sine of pi over four. Yeah. Divided by X minus pi over four. And if I added the sign here, I have to of course write um, plus Here is X minus pi over four. And if I, I have to add it back here, so it's a sine of pi over four minus uh, cosine X. Yes. Now I can, uh, I, can, I can look at this expression. This, I already know. This approaches, uh, it's the derivative of sine at pi over four. So that's just simply cosine of uh, pi over four, which is one over root two. Yes. Not, now notice that, what is this? This is sine of pi over four is the same as cosine of pi over four. They are equal both to one over root two. You agree? Sine and cosine at pi over four are the same. They're equal to root one over root two. So this is simply minus uh, um, cosine X uh, minus cosine of pi over four over X minus pi over four. So what is this? This is the derivative of cosine with a minus at X equal to pi over four. 
So that would be uh, simply the same as uh, sine of pi over four, because with a minus sine of pi over four, which is also one over uh, root two. So altogether, this limit, this limit altogether is, uh, is one over root two plus one over root two. So it's two over root two, which is simply root two. And if that's the, if this limit is root two, then this limit is one over root two. So my answer is minus two divided by root two or minus root two. May I be the person to ask how it got from um, like x minus pi over four to one over two, one over square root of two? Oh, you can't. Uh, uh, my apologies, what, what is, repeat your question. Um, I wanna be the person to ask how, how did it get from, you know, the what you circled in red, how it went from one over pi because over it's, two. It's never, it's never square root of two. Over, right? It's upside down. So what I see is if you just, just what you do, you just uh, hang yourself by your feet and stare at the screen and what you see is sine X minus cosine X divided by X minus pi over four. You see the reverse. So it's one over, it's one divided by what I did in the other, on the other page. Right. I can actually show you how to do it faster than this recognition. That's L'Hopital rule. How does L'Hopital work? It's just recognition that you have derivative, uh, yeah, you can differentiate numerator and denominator. You want to see that? Sure, go ahead. I have a hard time visualizing stuff, so yeah. No, no, it's good. You're just, it's, it's fine. I, I was, when I, when I first took calculus, I did all sorts of things, algebra, whatnot, right? But, but then you, you realize that all of them are the same, um, it's the same thing that you're doing. You want to see, uh, well, how, how I, no, I, I, we can develop general strategies if you want to see, right? That's L'Hopital. Would you like to see the general? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here is, uh, uh, here is um, the general strategy, okay? And I will do the problem again without, uh, with, with less writing. Sounds good? So, because you see at, on top of each thing, you can, you can develop better and better strategies. So uh, here is the thing, if you heard what's L'Hopital. Imagine that, uh, that I, I know that limit as X goes to A of F of X equals to zero, okay? And then I know that limit as X goes to A of G of X equal to zero. Okay, that's, that's what, I, what I have is given. So those two factors are true. I just observed that. Uh, so then I, I, I observe the following then. The limit as X goes to A of F of X divided by G of X is equal to the limit as X goes to a of the derivatives on the numerator. It's not, it's not quotient rule, right? That's, that's what you call L'Hopital. It's called uh, os Now uh, it's just a, an instance of what we're doing. It's recognition of the derivative. Why is that true? Do you want to see why that's true? You understand what this is saying is you can differentiate numerator, differentiate denominator and take the limit there. Okay, let me show you how that works for the previous problem and then I will explain why that rule is true. You ready? So that previous problem uh, ratio was limit as X goes to pi over four. Yes, one minus tangent X divided by sine X minus cosine X, yes? So here is my G function, the denominator, it's G of X. And the limit as X goes to pi over four is zero. You see, sine of, uh, of pi over four minus cosine of pi over four goes to zero. And numerator, uh, it's my F of X function. So the limit is zero again, right? So by L'Hopital's rule, uh, this is simply limit as X goes to pi over four 
derivative of numerator is uh, minus secant squared x divided derivative of sine is cosine x derivative of cosine is is minus sine x so it's cosine x plus sine x now if i plug in power 4 in the numerator it's it's really a secant of power 4 is square root of 2 square it's just uh, it's just 2 so we have minus 2 and here i have uh, cosine um, of uh, pi over 4 is um, it's it is uh, so cosine of pi over 4 it is uh, it is 1 divided by square root of 2 and sine of pi over 4 it's 1 divided by square root of 2 altogether we have uh, minus 2 divided by 2 square root of 2 or minus 2 divided by square root of 2 and 2 divided by square root of 2 is minus square root of 2 yes so that's uh, that, that's doing the same thing very rapidly without uh, the extra steps now now uh, why it, it's it's not a different idea it's the same idea why does it work why why do i need why, why can't i take derivative of numerator divide by derivative of denominator simple recognition look at it so if i have in general limit as x goes to a of f of x divided by g of x in particular f at a is uh, is equal to uh, f of a which is zero right so in particular this thing is limit as x goes to a and here you can write f of x minus f of a divided by g of x minus g of a you understand why because uh, because i'm just subtracting zero by assumption numerator approaches zero denominator approaches zero when i do that so this thing is zero and this thing is zero i haven't changed my expression yes now do you see that numerator looks the beginning of the derivative so what i have is a limit where x goes to a of f of x minus f of a multiplied by here we have gx minus ga what do i want to see on the denominator i want to see what do i want to put on the denominator here x minus a and of course i put it over here x minus a what are you seeing now uh, what you see is that this expression is just the definition of the derivative of f at a so what is that that is uh, f prime a and what is this this is the, the, the reverse this is uh, one over g prime of a so what you get is uh, altogether f prime a divided by g prime a you see which is what i did in the previous problem do you understand so you develop general strategies and you don't have to always just do recognition for the particular thing you just recognize the general pattern and you call it l'hopital's rule now you understand why it works it's just nothing more than recognition Do you follow it? You can't just do um, L'Hopital's rule instead of quotient rule because they're very different. Quotient rule is derivative. L'Hopital is, is a limit. I just realized that doing this limit is the same as calculating uh, the derivative of the numerator function and dividing it by the derivative of the denominator function. All right. So I'm not differentiating. I just, re I just recognize that this is a derivative in disguise. You understand? So what you have is all the difficult questions of your class are well there will be other types later on right but the reason i can solve them so easily is because i recognize it's just a derivative uh, in disguise all of the questions i mean you see give me a hard question i'll show you that it's derivative in disguise or maybe maybe there is um yeah pretty much oh, everything else i just it's, it's, you can clearly easily eliminate you see it guys you see you see how that connects so so this is me this is doing uh, the the idea formally the, re the reason it's so nice to to reason formally is that you don't have to solve the same problem again and again you just realize the general solution and you now can just automatically apply it you automate it right so uh, you want another question like this and uh, we can do it slower we can do it uh, we can do recognition slowly we can do the l'hopital rule which is the recognition fast What go, what's going on, Rachel? Why, why your face is so sad today? I'm just like a 
tad overwhelmed. Yeah, I know uh, a little bit, but by what you know, just too much information. Um, no, I just feel like everything's getting very fuzzy in my brain. It happens uh, to me too. It's probably not true. It, may, it might be that your brain is do, is producing new connections. You might need to rest. Maybe we should call it a day today, guys. You rest. Uh, don't think about this today and return to it uh, tomorrow. Sleep it over, then think about it tomorrow. You see, what I did when I was studying uh, uh, this uh, material, if you want, I can play your song if, if, if it cheers you up, but I'm pretty sure that you don't like my songs. So. I'll call it a day. Yeah, so before you go, you see, let me tell you what, how I learned it. I, first of all, I taught it to myself. Secondly, I was very obsessed. Everything I do, I'm obsessed about, right? So uh, I, would, I would just uh, all the time, I, I think of something like, do I know this? Why do I know this? Can I, can I write it this way? Can I do it another way, right? So uh, I'm not even answering the particular question, right? Do I remember what's the derivative of sine? Well, maybe it's, maybe it's cosine, maybe it's minus cosine. How do I know? Right, and then I just I just establish the idea again and again, and from different angles, and then it becomes very familiar. Right, I feel like looking at this, this makes so much sense to me. Like when you break it down with like f of x minus f of a, it just makes so much sense. But then when like I'm handed a problem, I'm like, mm, that's because you understand you you you're following, you're understanding it immediately, but it's very different. You can look at somebody riding a bicycle and you say it's making sense, but uh, you have to ride the bicycle. Yeah, and I know because I'm bad at it. I learned at 17 how to ride a bicycle at dark because I could not stand. I have big ego. I cannot stand when people look at me and think that I well, what is it? You cannot ride a bicycle. So I, it, so at night that's when I learned. <laughs> and I'm not good at it. I I almost broke my leg several times. I flew over it. You know, <laughs> so it's like this. So anyhow, guys, uh, good. Have a good um, evening. Enjoy your uh, day. Don't think about it today. You did quite a lot. Sleep it. Sleep over it. Tomorrow it might make better sense. But do it. Uh, do it on your own. Don't look into my notes. Actually, do it. Um, do it from your head. Good. If 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 you always do it in your head, it will never leave you. If it if it makes absolute sense, you see. To me, it makes absolute sense now, right? Because I see what's the derivative. I see what we're just calculating slope. Slope of two points that are very close together. You understand? Don't make the idea complicated. Slope. Two points together. If you ask me why do we want it, it's because um, it's like in computer science, you use everything can be approximated by polygons. So those are simple, the simplest curves, if I want to study curves. Or if Newton's law is really the derivative law, you understand? So because of that is that I, I, that's the initial reason I want to understand derivatives. Cool? Yeah. Thank you for staying uh, all this time. You, you really, I really enjoy teaching you guys. I really hope you will not forget the material once I'm dead. Good? Bye. Never. Good night. Never, Professor. Bye.